Welcome back to my uh, B Hotel experiment. Uh, this is part two. Please don't uh, don't watch this without having first watched part one because it will make no sense whatsoever. Look, very exciting. The first hole is being capped. So that's a female mason bee. He's just finishing off the the mouth of the hole with mud, and that's a six mil hole. Oh, there she goes, look, it's nearly finished. How cool is that? Now, uh, a second hole is full. And it's a 7 mil diameter. So, 6 and 7. Excellent, how exciting. So, the first six holes occupied by red mason bees were not in order but it was a six millimeter or seven millimeter two eight millimeters a nine and a ten so clearly mason bees don't seem to care uh, too much about the size of, of the diameter of their holes unfortunately then i came out one morning this was in early may and found that all the holes that have been occupied in both my experimental hotel and the others had all been pecked out by i'm guessing uh, a, a bird um, or something got to them, the plugs were removed. Um, I feared it was a woodpecker, and woodpeckers have really long tongues and can take basically all the offspring out. But actually when I, when I looked closely, it was only the top centimetre or so that had been uh, removed, maybe the top larvae, the, the one nearest the hole. So maybe it was a, a great tit, blue tit, I don't know, I didn't see anything. Um, any type, well, we'll probably never know. Anyway, then the mason bees fizzled out and I thought was a bit disappointed really because I couldn't conclude a huge amount from six holes being occupied. Uh, and most years I don't get too much else in my bee hotels but this year it turned out to be different so let's see what happened next. It's all happening in my bee hotels today. Middle of July the mason bees are long gone but lots of leaf cutters and other beasties are around and about. Let's have a look. So in the middle there we've got a leaf cutter bee finishing off a tunnel and at the top there that's a sharp tailed bee that's a cuckoo a cuckoo of uh, these leaf cutters and it keeps dashing in when the leaf cutters are away, away getting leaves and pollen for their offspring the sharp tailed bee dashes in uses its sharp tail to stab a a hole in the leaf covering and inject an egg into each cell which then consumes the poor leaf cutter bees offspring and food very naughty she's a busy girl there in the middle she's putting the finishing touches they're quite messy creatures aren't they Mason bees do a nice tidy job of sealing up a bee hotel hole, but the leaf cutters just kind of seem to randomly glue a few leaves. In fact, let you see here, one of them's just glued a bit of leaf to the, missed the hole entirely. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, oh, and there's another one. Who's that? I think that's a male just checking out the holes, not sure. Anyway, it's quite exciting to just sit here and see what's happening. So, it's the 2nd of August. Uh, we've had an astonishingly hot and dry July and the bees are, seem to be done for the year. Who can blame them? I'm feeling a bit tired myself. Um, so it's time to, to wrap up what we've discovered about the preferences of uh, of bees that nest in in bee hotels what size hole do they really like so just to recap you you will remember that I started out with this idea that the best size hotel uh, uh, holes for bee hotels are about eight millimeters that seems to work for red mason bees and I've been recommending this for a long time to people when they ask what's the best size but I didn't have any really good evidence I never put it to the test so the idea is to give bees a choice and see what holes they choose. 
The red mason bees, as we discovered, I put this up a bit late for them um, this year, try again next year maybe, um, but they only occupied uh, a handful of holes um, just after I, I put the, the experiment up, a six, a seven, two eights, a nine and a ten millimeter diameter. So basically they don't seem too fussy. Um, but interestingly, the leaf cutter bees that came later um, do seem to have shown really distinct preferences. So I've got 14 um, leaf cutter bee uh, nests in my hotel and seven of them were in the 10 millimeter diameter holes, the biggest ones. Six of them were in the nine millimeter holes and one of them squeezed itself into an eight millimeter hole. I say squeeze themselves because the leaf cutter bees tend to be bigger than the mason bees. I think all my leaf cutters were Willoughby's leaf cutter, which is a reasonably chunky little bee. Uh, so perhaps not surprisingly, they seem to prefer the bigger holes. But that isn't the end of the story, excitingly, because I had some other guests move in that I have not had before. Um, I had two species of solitary wasp, one of which I think was um, Ancistroceros gazella. This is what it looked like. Um, and that is a parasite of, of Lepidopterans, butterflies and moths. It finds the caterpillars, paralyzes them and stuffs them into the holes and then seals the holes up with, it looks like clay. Uh, so I've got three of those all in the six millimeter diameter tunnels, the smallest ones. Uh, and then I also had a little, a, a little black, entirely black solitary wasp, which I failed to identify or get a good photograph of, I'm afraid. I'll hope to get them next year. And so they plugged the holes with what looks like reddish clay. And there were three of those, again, all in the six millimeter diameter tunnels. So these little solitary wasps seem to like the smallest tunnels. So let me show you a graph. Scientists love a good graph. Um, I've got one here, which you won't be able to read. Um, so here it is on your screen. Uh, so the yellow, so what we've got here is the number of occupied holes is the y-axis versus the diameter along the x-axis. And if you look at the yellow bars, you can see they're scattered all the way across. They're the mason bees that don't seem too fussy about what size holes they go in. The leaf cutter bees are the green bars and you can see they're all on the right hand side of the graph so they prefer uh, the bigger holes. And on the left uh, the smallest holes are mainly occupied by these little solitary wasps, the other category, the grey bar in the six mil diameter holes. So actually least popular were seven millimeter holes although sample size is quite small and uh, I couldn't swear that that's always going to be the case take-home message I think is that basically diversity is good which perhaps we could have guessed from the start um, if you want to, to attract a wide range of bees and hopefully some little solitary wasps as well which are fascinating little creatures then create bee hotels with a range of hole sizes from at least five to ten mils and, and who knows of course we haven't tried smaller and larger maybe other creatures might be attracted so next year I'm going to try again but with a uh, a bigger range of hole sizes and maybe you could give it a go too. So that was exciting wasn't it? Uh, do, uh, do subscribe to my uh, channel if you'd like to get more updates along similar lines. Have a good day!